You know, I told this story in uh, my YouTube short the other day, and I think it bothered some people, but uh, I was sick last week. I lost my voice. I decided to drink some hot coffee instead of the usual cold coffee. And for whatever reason, you know, I guess I haven't been to Dunkin' Donuts in a while. They gave me the hot coffee in a paper cup. Well, it used to be the styrofoam cup. I love the styrofoam cup. There was something about it. It had like a weight to it. It, it felt good. I think it even made the coffee taste better. Yeah, it was like a sugary type of thing or something. I don't know, but I was very dis I mean, I could have cried when they gave me the paper cup. That's how disappointed I was. Steve Weiner from GetRubix.com, and today we're going to talk about uh, how you can deploy PowerShell scripts to your Intune devices, and not the obvious way either. We're going to talk about packaging them. I know they're bad for the environment, and they're you know they're porous, and and sure, maybe some chemicals got into the coffee, but it, you know, where's the nostalgia? Solving for the modern workplace. Okay, so deploying a PowerShell script in Intune. I can go to Devices. I can click on Windows and Scripts and Remediations. And you're going to go to Platform Scripts up here. We're going to add a script. Uh, let's call this Chrome Desktop Shortcut. Maybe what I want to do is if, uh, you know, I have Chrome installed, I want to go ahead and... and uh, deploy a shortcut to the public desktop. So you have a PowerShell script. I'm going to go ahead and choose it. Let's go to your desktop. Oh, Chrome desktop script. There's my shortcut. Um, I don't want to run using login credentials. I want that to be no, so it runs a system. I also don't want to enforce a signature check. Um, I'm not signing anything. And I do want it to run in, in the 64-bit uh, PowerShell mode. And I'm going to hit next. And now I can simply assign it to a group. All right. So that's how we deploy PowerShell scripts. Thanks for watching. And no, of course I'm joking. That's not, <laughs> that's not all this video is. Um, that is the bread and butter, straightforward way you can take a PowerShell script, upload it to Intune and deploy it. The problem is, as you saw, we don't have a lot of options there. We can't give it any requirements. We can't specify a detection rule. It'll try to run about three times, I think, and then ultimately it'll either succeed, time out, or fail. And we, we really don't have any visibility into the uh, success of that script. So what I've been doing for a very long time and what I would encourage others to do is take your PowerShell script and we're gonna package it as a Win32 application. So I'm gonna show you how to do that and some of the benefits it gives you as well. So let's let's rewind that. Okay, so I have this PowerShell script I'm gonna make. Uh, it's gonna be very, very simple. We're going to um, basically take uh, Chrome if it's installed and make a, shortcut to the app on the public desktop. So I need to define the shortcut path. I need to set the target for Chrome app. I'm gonna check if a shortcut already exists, and then we're going to create and set shortcut. All right, so this isn't really so much about the PowerShell we're writing here as it is uh, us deploying it. So I'm gonna kind of run through this very quickly. I'm gonna say write host, setting Chrome shortcut on public desktop. Okay, so let's define that. We'll say public desktop equals uh, system, yep, that's not what I want. System environment, we'll do get folder path, common desktop directory, uh, oh, what did I put there? I put a hyphen. There we go, get folder path. Now we'll do the shortcut path is going to be join path and we'll do public desktop since we just defined that. Um, join path, that'll be the path actually. And the child path will be called Google Chrome dot LNK. So we're going to look for that first. Um, so let's get our target for Chrome. Chrome path equals environment 
program files. Program files, we'll say Google, Chrome, application, chrome.exe. So that's ultimately where we need to direct the shortcut to. So let's see if it exists. If test path, shortcut path, so if it exists, we're gonna write host, uh, Chrome shortcut already exists. And we will exit at that point. Else, we're gonna do the rest of the script now. So everything else will be inside this bracket. So we can actually move that here. So I'm gonna, we're gonna use a, a W script to create the shell. So I'm just gonna paste that in here. It's not super interesting. Okay, um, if you're curious, obviously pause the screen right here because we're going to, uh, I can walk you through it. Basically we make a new com object, that's W script shell. Uh, we create a shortcut and that's gonna equal the shortcut path, which is up here. Um, and we're gonna point it to the Chrome path, right? And it's working directory and the executable. So nothing uh, super unique there. Uh, we're gonna save the shortcut. So that'll just look like shortcut.save. Right. And then we can write host, shortcut created successfully at shortcut path. Okay. And that'll be the end of it. But a few things. So one is you're probably wondering, so how are we going to know if Chrome is installed already? Um, well, that's the benefit of packaging this in an app because we can use the requirements, right? So we'll get to that in a second. Because we're doing this as an app, we can add some logging to this and we know it's gonna where it's gonna output. So we can do log path equals C program, yep, program data, Microsoft into management extension logs. And what we'll do is we'll say, Start transcript. Oh, that's not what I want. Start transcript. Path is going to be log path dash chrome shortcut script dot log. And we'll append that. And all we have to do at the end is say stop the transcript. So now we're logging it out to where Intune keeps all the Intune management extension logs. So that when we pull the diagnostics on the device, our log script our, our script logs will come right along with it. All right, cool. So to have an app, you need an install command. Well, that's pretty simple because it's just gonna be PowerShell pointing to the script. But we're also gonna need other things. We're gonna need a requirements script because we wanna to check to see if Chrome exists. Or we could use a file for that, right? There's a few things we can do. I think we'll use the file path. Now we're also gonna need a detection rule. Now in this case, we're making a desktop shortcut. So that's a clear detection rule. But if for some reason, you know, we weren't, we would need some way to detect. So let's build that into our script. So what I'm gonna do is at the bottom here, before I stop the transcript, I'm gonna add a new item and we're gonna put that in C program data, Microsoft. And we're going to call it Chrome shortcut installed dot tag. So that'll basically set my, that'll be my detection rule for when I'm done with the script so that I know it's there. And alternatively, what we'll do is we'll make another script because I'm going to show you two ways you could do the requirements. So we're going to call this uh, Chrome shortcut requirement dot PS1. So all I have to do here is say Chrome equals uh, environment program files, Google, Chrome application, chrome.exe. If test path Chrome, we're going to say, uh, write output chrome installed else 
right output chrome not installed very simple so i'm gonna show you how that works in a second but let's go ahead and package our app first so i actually don't mm, this technically doesn't need to be included with it but it also doesn't matter so i'm going to package this whole directory and we're going to run our packaging utility as an administrator i'm picking my main source my setup file is going to be my script it's going to be chrome desktop shortcut dot ps1 and I'm going to output it in the same directory. So there we go. I have a Chrome desktop shortcut in TuneWin. Well, let's go ahead and uh, go to apps and let's add this. So we're going to make an in TuneWin app 32. And we're going to select the package file that we just created. So desktop, oh, there it is, Chrome desktop shortcut. And we have to fill out a bunch of stuff. So we're going to call it add Chrome desktop shortcut. You can give it a description if you want. Publisher, I'll leave myself. You can even give it an image if you want. I think I have a PowerShell icon somewhere here. Oh, I do. So you can give it an image if you want. Maybe you want to make it available in the company portal. Uh, so my install command is going to be PowerShell.exe execution policy bypass dot backslash and the name of my uh, file, which is like keep having to look back because I can't remember Chrome desktop shortcut.ps1 Chrome desktop shortcut.ps1 so all we're doing is we're telling it to execute the PowerShell script inside the app package there really is no uninstall command so we can leave an asterisk if you really wanted to you can have another PowerShell script to remove it from the the uh, desktop I suppose so that's completely optional and I want it running as system now here's where it gets good. So requirements, I don't really, not concerned about the architecture. I also don't care about the Windows version, but I could do two things when it comes to a custom requirements type. So I could do a file, meaning I can say the path is C program files, Google Chrome application. And then down here I could say Chrome EXE. And the file has to exist. So this is a requirement in order to do the script. So this will tell me, hey, if Chrome is installed, run it. If not, don't run it. But I can also use my script. So either way is fine. So I'm gonna choose script. I'm gonna say, um, look for Chrome. And we'll just pick the script we created earlier. Uh, Chrome shortcut requirement. So what I can do here is login credentials no i could say if the output is a string it has to be equal to chrome installed so if it's chrome installed which is what i made the output here exactly the same if that's the output go ahead and install the app if not it's not applicable these both achieve the same thing, so it's really up to you, right? It's always helpful, especially if you're looking for something more complex. It's helpful to know how to make your own requirements script, but in this case, either one. But notice we do get the benefit of choosing these, even though this is just a PowerShell script. All right, I'm going to proceed. I'm going to hit next. My detection rules. So I'm going to use a manual rule, and it's going to be the file path. And remember, this is going to be looking for the file path I previously made. Hold on this guy see program data microsoft and chrome shortcut installed dot tag so c program oh i did that wrong c program data microsoft chrome shortcut installed dot tag so it'll look for that and if it's there that's how it'll know the app ran all right and then we just hit next and you can assign that to your groups. So there we go. I think it's pretty simple, but it's also a very powerful way to do scripts. Yeah, you know, like I said, we can go the platform script route, but then we lose a lot of these options, right? You know, adding additional files to them, making our own requirements, doing our own detection rules. So it just makes deploying PowerShell scripts more robust. And then the other thing is you can even make them available, right? not really sure of a situation where you would, maybe if it's something like that or if it's just something you're testing, but when you're doing the platform scripts, they just have to fire out there and nothing anyone can do about it. Here, you have the option to pull it down yourself. So 
pretty simple, but this does come up a lot. So hopefully it sheds some light on showing you your additional options when it comes to PowerShell and Intune. And we'll be seeing you.